right, members. I have received notice from the Minister for Infrastructure that she wishes to, to make a statement. Ida, Minister. Um, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. With your permission, in compliance with Section 52 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998, I wish to make a statement regarding the North-South Ministerial Council Inland Waterways Meeting which was held in the North-South Ministerial Council Joint Secretariat Headquarters in Armagh and by video conference on the 11th of November 2020. The executive was represented by myself as Minister for Infrastructure and by Minister Robin Swan, Minister for Health. The Irish Government was represented by Dara O'Brien, TD, Minister for Housing, Local Government and Heritage, and Minister Malcolm Noonan, TD, Minister of State for Heritage and Electoral Reform. This statement has been agreed with Minister Swan, and I am making it on behalf of both of us. The meeting was chaired by Minister O'Brien and dealt with issues relating to inland waterways and its constituent agency, Waterways Ireland. The following topics were discussed and decisions taken where appropriate. Firstly, we noted the response of Waterways Ireland to the challenges posed by COVID-19. The Council was advised that there had been an increase in user numbers along towpaths and trails during the period of COVID-19 related restrictions and noted the role of Waterways Ireland in leading a user engagement project through the network of inland waterways of Europe to achieve a greater understanding of the increased recreational use of inland waterways since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Council also noted the increasing popularity of the inland waterways as a holiday destination for the domestic market. The Council also noted Waterways Ireland's preparations for Brexit in the context of its status as a north-south implementation body. We noted the comprehensive progress report provided by Waterways Ireland, covering matters including the management and maintenance of waterways, capital expenditure projects and an ongoing programme of replacement of existing and the installation of new jetties and lock gates along the navigations. Ministers also noted plans for blueways developments and restoration work on the Ulster Canal and that Waterways Ireland successfully hosted the World Canals Conference in Athlone in September 2018. In terms of corporate governance, the Council noted Waterways Ireland's annual report and accounts for 2016, 2017 and 2018, which have been led before the Northern Ireland Assembly and both houses of the Oireachtas. We also noted that Waterways Ireland's annual report and draft accounts for 2019 have been submitted to the Comptrollers and Auditors General in both jurisdictions and following certification will be led before the Assembly and both houses of the Oireachtas. The Council approved Waterways Ireland's corporate plan for 2017-2019 and associated business plans that were prepared in accordance with the guidance issued by the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform and the Department of Finance and recommended the budget provision for each. We noted that Waterways Ireland's 2020-22 corporate plan and 2020 and 2021 business plans have been prepared and following necessary approvals will be submitted to the NSMC for approval before the end of 2020. We also noted the process for the recruitment of the Chief Executive Officer for Waterways Ireland. The Council consented to a number of property disposals and the Council received a progress report on the restoration of the Ulster Canal and the development of the Ulster Canal Greenway. We noted the progress achieved in the restoration of the Ulster Canal, including the completion of Phase 1 of the restoration from Upper Loch Erne to Castle Saunderson, the ongoing work and future plans for the restoration from Clonus to Comflad, and the development of the Ulster Canal Greenway. The Council agreed to hold its next NSMC Inland Waterways meeting early in 2021. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And now we move to Michelle McElveen, uh, Chair of the Infrastructure.
Okay, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Minister for her statement. And, and while I understand that there's a format for recording these meetings, I suppose it's somewhat disappointing that, given the time that's lapsed, that has lapsed since the last update, that the work which has been carried out um, um, by Waterways Ireland in the interim, that really all we're receiving today is a, a list of noted reports. And, but that said, could the Minister outline the main priorities for Waterways Ireland in Northern Ireland in 2021? and provide details of the properties which the Council has agreed to dispose of, and also indicate whether she would be prepared to share the reports with the Committee. I thank the Member um, for her question. In terms of the properties that were disposed, um, the, this included a lease agreement for the lease of our space at Grand Canal Dock for the portion of the cantilevered office development at Waterways House, which extends over Grand Canal Dock, three separate lease agreements for the lease of our space at Grand Canal Quay for the redevelopment of Boland Mills, which will encroach into Waterways Ireland's aerospace over Grand Canal Quay, Barrow Street, Dublin, uh, to facilitate the development of a pedestrian boardwalk and 10 residential balconies and two cultural exhibition balconies. A 999-year lease of aerospace at Grand Canal Quay for the development of the Mill 2 Dock Mill Apartment Development, Barrow Street, Dublin, into apartments with balconies and lower deck incorporated. A lease of our space at Grand Canal Dock for the portion of the cantilevered office development at the Malt House, which extends over Grand Canal Dock. An easement of the installation of a polythene pipe at Rathanagan cross the Grand Canal to facilitate storm outfall a lease for the erection of a pedestrian bridge to service a new railway station at Pelletstown Railway Development, Dublin 15, an easement for the installation of a duct housing, a power cable to provide power to the rail lines at Pelletstown Railway Development, Dublin 15, a 35-year lease for a revised area of land to facilitate the construction of an access gangway and retractable pontoon at Ballyvolane, Mount Shannon Road, Anacotti in County Limerick, a lease to facilitate the continued construction of the Royal Canal Greenway, an easement to facilitate a prescribed right of way to the domestic residents and land at Moy Valley, Enfield in County Kildare, an easement to formalise a right of way to access his lands at Bracken Little, Kilbegan in County Offaly, the granting of a 99-year lease and to the sale of an area of ground along the shoreline at Priors Point, Carrick and Shannon in County Leitrim, an easement to facilitate a right-of-way to a property which they purchased from Watersways Ireland at Clonheen in County Kildare, an easement to formalise a right-of-way to access his lands in Mullingar in County Westmeath, an easement in respect of a 500 mm diameter and 300 mm diameter rising main under the Grand Canal using an existing 1500 mm culvert as part of the Upper Liffey Valley sewage scheme, an easement for surface water and foul sewer pipes under the Royal Canal at Brannigan's Town, an easement to facilitate access to their property at Skirtine in Offaly County, Kildare, a right-of-way easement to facilitate access to the property at Jigginstown in Nace in County Kildare, an easement to facilitate access to their property at Rogerstown in Derry, County Offaly, a 99-year lease for the erection of a road bridge crossing the River Barrow as part of the Athy Distributor Road Scheme, and the granting of a supplemental lease of an area of Shannon Waterway at, in County Roscommon. All of the disposals were in the south of Ireland. None of them were contentious. Some were financially significant, and each property is naturally subject to valuation prior to disposal to ensure best value for money is achieved. In respect of the reports, I am happy to share those with the committee and with members. Good morning, uh, last can call you, and I want to say thank you to the Minister for her statement. Um, Minister, on the issue of waterways, can I ask uh, what plans are there to implement a lifting bridge at Newry Southern Relief Road as well as narrow water to ensure continued access to Newry Canal? Thank you. 
I thank the member for her question. That specific issue was not uh, discussed um, at our meeting, but the member will know that I have been engaging with local stakeholders on this issue. I most recently uh, met with representatives from all political parties uh, across the Council uh, to hear their view on the lifting bridge, uh, and I'm continuing with that focused engagement to ensure that we can get the right project in terms of the Newry Southern Relief Road, but also the member will be aware of my commitment in terms of Narrow Water Bridge. Item er, Dolores Kelly for your cash. I call Dolores Kelly. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement. And she will be aware of that uh, in my own constituency there has been a campaign for the Ulster Canal to, right up to Portadown for many, many years. So I look forward to hearing that in a future statement from the Minister. But uh, the canal is, of course, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, a commitment within the new decade, new approach. So I just wonder, in terms of the Ulster Canal Greenway, could the Minister provide further update? Yes, I'm of course happy to provide an update on the Ulster Canal Greenway. Uh, as the member rightly points out, the Ulster Canal Restoration Project is a commitment to the new decade, new approach, as is the Ulster Canal Greenway. Um, Waterways Ireland, in collaboration with Monaghan County Council, Armagh City, Banbridge and Craigavon, Borough Council and the East Border Region Limited, took the lead in submitting an application for interreg funding for the project. The application was successful and just under um, €5 million Euro was allocated towards the cost of the Greenway. The Ulster Canal Greenway strategy, devised by Waterways Ireland in collaboration with local authority partners along the Ulster Canal corridor, identified 12 potential Greenway routes, totalling almost 200 kilometres in length, and two of them comprise this project, Smithborough to Monaghan and Monaghan to Middletown. The annual socio-economic value of improved health outcomes from local population access to the 200 kilometres of Greenway for walking and cycling is estimated at £14.4 million. So as we can see, projects with huge and multiple benefits, and it fits into my priorities as well in terms of ensuring that we have a green recovery from COVID. I call Rosemary Barton for a question. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, so far for what you've said in your statement. Minister, um, this is quite a large project. Can you advise me what conversations there's been with the Northern Ireland Tourist Board to try and promote this project here within Northern Ireland? I thank the member um, for a question. Uh, Waterways Ireland is committed to working uh, in partnership with local authorities and working with our tourist representative bodies as well. As you say, the Ulster Canal Greenway and the Ulster Canal in itself are, are projects that will deliver multiple benefits, whether that's physical and mental health, but also in attracting visitors uh, to the local area as well. So hugely important in, in terms of the tourism benefits. Uh, and Waterways Ireland, no doubt, will continue to work with all key partners um, in the delivery of the project. I call Andrew Muir for a question. Thank you very much, uh, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for her statement. Uh, my question is really in the Ulster Canal Greenway. Phase 2 is the Smithborough to Middletown, and it's on course, it says, to, for delivery in 2021. Is the Minister confident that will occur, and is there any timescales for future phases in terms of completing the entire project? I thank the member for his question. Certainly, I haven't received any information um, otherwise in terms of the time frame that has been set out, but I'm happy to um, come back to the minister with further details if that doesn't prove to be correct. I call David Hilditch for a question. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for your statement uh, today. On this, the recruitment for the Chief Executive post, um, could you advise us as that competition began? And if so, when do you feel it will, or when do you know if it will be concluded? Um, the CEO Post and Waterways Ireland became vacant with the departure of the former post holder. Um, as a result of the absence of the NSMC at that time, a successor could not be appointed. So the post was filled on an interim basis and with a fixed term contract. I can confirm to the member that a recruitment competition was launched on the 23rd of October by the Public Appointments Service and the closing date was the 12th of November. Following the normal process of shortlisting and interviewing, the successful candidate will be appointed by the NSMC. Can I welcome the Minister's statement today? And I do welcome the Minister's announcement in relation to the Middletown section. Um, 
there is question marks over whether it's Middletown and Monaghan and then on to Smithborough. Um, did that discussion come up on the day, Minister, that that's the whole route? And also, will you give a commitment to work with local councils to uh, get that project on the way as soon as possible? Because this is a big game changer for Middletown, big opportunities in terms of promotion of, of tourism and everything else, and it certainly helped that we board a village. Coramilla that it is a game changer and there are huge benefits. My understanding is, as he has set out in terms of the route, but I'm happy to provide further detail to the member um, as, we, as we move this project forward. Call Keith Buchanan for a question. Thank you. Thank the Minister so far for her answers. Minister, relating to here in Northern Ireland, I've got a rundown of every culvert and pipe in, the, in, in all our counties throughout Ireland and uh, appreciate the work that's going on down there. But here in Northern Ireland, can you confirm what the priorities are for Waterway Ireland? In 2021 and further beyond? Yep. Um, well, Waterways Ireland is obviously um, about ensuring that we maximise our blue infrastructure. Um, the member will be aware, and particularly through COVID, we have seen a huge increase uh, in the number of people who are accessing uh, our local heritage and our local blue and green infrastructure. So it's about ensuring that that's safe. But it's also about making sure that we're able to invest in that infrastructure so that we grow it. I mean, one of the things that we have seen through COVID is a huge increase in the number of visitors, the number of people who are facilitating and using this infrastructure as part of their staycation. Certainly this is something that I would like to see us build on and I know that it's something that um, Waterways Ireland are committed to. They've been engaging across Europe and also looking at international best practice as well to ensure that we are able to showcase our blue infrastructure, our, our navigations, our canals uh, in a way that ensures maximum benefits in terms of health and well-being but also for tourism, for people who live here but also when we get to the place where we're able to open up again and invite people from around the world to come and see the many assets that we have. Here, Mayor Martina Anderson for your cash. I call Martina Anderson for question. Going may I get the last can call you and Goran Brekas, Asin Righteous. I thank the Minister for her statement. And Minister, you said in the statement that you discussed the status of Waterways Ireland, um, but given that the North will lose the EU oversight, um, perhaps by the end of today. Uh, did the North South Ministerial Council discuss rela uh, issues relating to improving and maintaining the water quality of Waterways Ireland uh, to protect that from further environmental harm? As we know, there'll be no good Brexit uh, for the North of Ireland. I thank the member for her question. Um, it's absolutely clear that there should be no reduction uh, in any of our environmental um, standards. Um, when we were speaking uh, about uh, Brexit, um, we were examining the preparations that Waterways Ireland has undertaken for the period or for the end of the transition period. Uh, we also talked about the impact that it may have, and while there is no possible outcome that will impact solely on Waterways Ireland from Brexit, there are various outcomes that will impact on the organisation. EU directives will no longer apply to GBNNI, and this may lead to an incremental dis divergence in legislation between the two jurisdictions with the passage of time. Uh, GBNNI will not have to comply with the EU procurement directives, and so that may see rules changed. Uh, in the short term, following the exit, our rules are likely to remain the same. However, they may change in the medium term. The additional procurement regime will bring added administration. Uh, and Waterways Ireland has considered the implication of the need to migrate to a new tender advertising portal and platform. As a member has highlighted, the EU funding will no longer be available in the north, with the exception of Peace Plus, which the EU has committed to continuing uh, to continue allocating. And of course, any changes to the common travel area arrangements would impact on Waterways Ireland staff, whose area of work covers both jurisdictions as well as on users of the navigations, particularly the Shannon Urn Waterway, which runs through counties Leitrim, Cavan, and Fermanagh. So, just to assure the member, these issues were discussed. Pat Catney for your cash. I call Pat Catney for. Uh, thank you, Minister. Thanks for your statement so far, um, Minister. I, I, I live right on the towpath, and it's a real asset to us. I was on it yesterday in my new electric bike, which you also made legal. I would like to ask the Minister. Uh, I noted the increase in the capital budget provided to Waterways Ireland. Can the Minister tell us more about why this increase was provided? 
thank the member for his question and it's great to see that he and hear that he's embracing the active travel agenda literally on his e-bike. Um, Waterways Ireland has a statutory duty to manage, maintain, develop and promote the navigations for which it is responsible, mainly for recreational purposes. In order to fulfil the statutory duty, the navigational infrastructure must be fit for purpose, meet health and safety requirements and also meet customer expectations. Severe weather events, particularly the more frequent incidences of flooding in recent years, as well as ongoing usage, causes deterioration of infrastructure. DFI capital allocations to Waterways Ireland are invested in repairing damage to the infrastructure, replacing jetties, moorings and other facilities that are beyond repair, and providing additional facilities to accommodate the increasing number of users on Loch Erne and the Lower Ban. Specifically, in the years 2017 to 2020, Waterways Ireland has delivered on a number of capital projects on the Loch Erne and on the Lower Ban. Tomb Lockhouse was refurbished and opened as a Waterways Heritage Centre and Cafe, operated by Tombridge Industrial Development Amenities and Leisure, a local community association. Existing jetties were replaced, some with floating jetties, at six sites on Loch Erne. Access ramps were also replaced where necessary. A leakage was repaired at Portnell Lock and the swing bridge was repaired and an automated lifting device was installed at Portna. Uh, work will commence on the rehabilitation of Carn Row Weir in spring 2021 and the anticipated completion date is autumn 2022. I think it's important to also note that Waterways Ireland has reported an increase of 3,288 boat registrations since 2016, which demonstrates the increasing popularity of our inland waterways. I'll call Roy Beggs for a question. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement. It refers to the draft accounts for 2019, which are not as of yet completed. Now, that's some 11 months after the accounts has closed, and it's helpful in accounting for public money to have timely reporting. So my question to the Minister is, given that Waterways Ireland doesn't have a board, who can we be held account for this late finalisation of the accounts and the expenditure of public money? Well, the issue in relation to the accounts um, is a matter that the Minister for Finance here ha had cleared. Uh, the Minister uh, Finance in the South didn't have time to clear it in advance of the meeting. I understand that those have now been cleared, and so those accounts will be laid uh, in the Assembly and also um, in the Houses of the Oireachtas as well. In respect of the issue of there being no board, the Member will know that the North-South bodies were established under the North-South um, Cooperation Implementation Bodies NI Order. 1999, and two of the six bodies were established without the requirement under the legislation to have a board. One of these is Waterways Ireland. At the NSMC plenary meeting on the 15th of June 2012, ministers endorsed the St Andrews Review recommendation that sponsor departments should consider options regarding the setting up of a board to direct Waterways Ireland's affairs. An options paper was presented to ministers for their consideration at the North-South Ministerial Council meeting on the 19th of June 2013. I'm advised that ministers agreed that the existing governance arrangement should be strengthened, but that there is no requirement for the appointment of a board at this time. To assure the member, steps have been taken since to strengthen the governance arrangements. An annual service level agreement has been put in place between Waterways Ireland and sponsor departments and Waterways Ireland provides biannual assurance statements to sponsor departments. Here, Mayor Philip McGuigan for your cash. I call Philip McGuigan for the question. Mayor uh, last can call you. And like everybody else, Minister, I welcome the announcement and the information on the Ulster Canal Greenways. I'm a bit jealous of Pat. Uh, I mean, getting out on his bike yesterday, the, the rural roads of North Antrim were very frosty yesterday, but that's, that's a, an issue for a, another day, Minister, in terms of rural gritting. Can I ask uh, the Minister for an update on the Ulster Canal restoration works itself, and particularly phase two of the project, and when the restoration of the canal to Cl Clonus is estimated to be built? Thank the member for his question. Um, it, as a member will know, in 2007, the Irish government gave a commitment to fund the total cost uh, of restoration of the Ulster Canal from Loch Erne to Clonus. In that same year, Waterways Ireland was given NSMC approval to explore the possible restoration of the Ulster Canal from Loch Erne to Clonus. 
Phase 1, restoration of the stretch from Loch Garn to Castle Saunderson was completed in spring 2019 and is now open for navigation. Phase 2, restoration of the stretch from Clonus to Clumfad is currently underway. A commission to investigate a source of a sustainable water supply for the marina has been completed. Waterways Ireland is satisfied that a suitable supply has been sourced in order to facilitate the development. Creative Design is also ongoing to develop a vision for the canal within Clunis. Work relating to land requirements and purchase arrangements for this section of the restoration has also commenced. And then if I could me briefly mention phase three, uh, work will commence on the restoration of the stretch from Castle Saunderson to Clonfad when phase two is complete and, and all three phases of the project have been funded by the Irish government. Here, Mayor Daniel McCrossan for New Cash. I call Daniel McCrossan. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. And before I ask the Minister a question, I'm wondering will Pat Catney bring his e-bike to Stormont and give us a demonstration, get up and down the mile a, a few times? Uh, Minister, thank you for uh, that statement. It's very, very useful. And uh, thank you also for your huge efforts over the course of the last uh, number of months throughout this pandemic in supporting our communities. I know that COVID-19 has had a particular impact uh, on services. Uh, can the Minister tell us what impact uh, did the restrictions have on Waterways Ireland? I thank the member for his question. And um, this actually points to something very positive during the pandemic, uh, where countermetrics are available. Comparisons with the 2019 figures showed a 110 percentage increase in user numbers on towpaths and trails along the navigations in the period from March to August 2020. Where counter metrics are not available, feedback from local government and community partners indicated an unprecedented increase in user numbers, many of whom were using the facilities for the first time. During August, all boat hire companies reported 100 per cent booking solely from the domestic market as the inland waterways became a popular option for staycations. In previous years, the domestic market would have accounted for on average 22 per cent of the boat hire business. Bookings for September and October were at 80 to 90 per cent, again from the domestic market. Uh, and it is important that we build on this momentum and success. I've talked a number of times about the quiet revolution uh, during COVID, um, where people are engaging with nature again, where they are being more active in terms of their lifestyle, um, and where they are getting a renewed appreciation uh, for their shared home place. I'm really pleased that Waterways Ireland uh, has been part of the delivery of this, and that it will continue to build on this success and the positive feedback uh, from visitors and local communities, um, because I believe that we have a real opportunity here to make our inland waterways a more integral part of our local community as we build our green recovery in the post-pandemic era. I call Jim Allister for a question. Okay. I want to return to the question of openness and transparency in regard to Waterways Ireland. You've told us it is no board. That means there are no minutes that any member of the public can ever read. In fact, when my office phoned them to ascertain how one could follow the work of Waterways Ireland, we were told, read our annual report, read our annual report. The 2016 report has just been published this year. We're at the ridiculous situation where even the chair of the committee has to come to this House to ask what projects are underway. How is a member of the public ever meant to follow the work of Waterways Ireland as it spends our public money if there are no minutes, no accountability, no oversight for the, what the members of the public can follow? Isn't it a farcical situation? Thank the member for his question. Uh, Waterways Ireland is accountable to the Department for Infrastructure, the Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage and to the North-South Ministerial Council. Ministers discharge their oversight responsibilities in respect of Waterways Ireland through the NSMC. This includes consideration and agreement of the budget and corporate and business plans and progress towards agreed business targets and project milestones. Quarterly monitoring meetings are also held, chaired by senior civil servants from DFI and DHLGH. The Chief Executive Officer and appropriate directors attend to account for business performance and corporate governance. 
Waterways Ireland's Audit Committee meets quarterly. The committee has an independent chair and two external members and has unrestricted access to the internal and external auditors. The committee has access to the work of internal audit, approves the internal audit work plan and receives reports on various aspects of internal control. That concludes questions on the statement and members just take their ease while we move to the next item of business.